Hello once again and welcome back to Little Bits of Lisp. This time we're going to talk about equality. Now this is something that confused me a lot when I first got into Common Lisp was there was a number of functions for equality. I didn't understand why you'd need so many. Like surely you have more, something more generic and that would be fine. Well, it turns out there's a lot of uses for these different ones and I've come really around to the idea of having different equality functions for different cases. So let's talk about the, the um, some of the complications. So let's take these two juggling balls. So are they equal? Well, you know, for my functional purposes, they're identical, you know, like they're the same size and the same weight and they got the same design. And if you mix the two up, I couldn't tell one from the other. Um, but they're not exactly the same object. Um, it's not just that they're not similar. There's a thing in obviously in programming is we could take a, ver a value and store it in a variable A. And then we can take the same value and store it in variable B. Now we've got two places uh, which refer to the same object. So we could compare those two places, what, like compare the values in these two places. And that's to say that it's exactly the same object. It's kind of weird because it's not something we deal with in day-to-day -day life, but it is important. So we're going to look at these different kinds of equality. And to do so, we've got a few things set up already. We have three uh, variables defined. We've got A and B and C. Now A is just uh, defined as the is bound to this string hello and then b is bound to the the uh the value currently bound to a so it's going to get the same hello string as in a and then c is has been defined in the same way as a um and now we're going to see the differences so our very first equality function is called eq and it compares to see if the things we are passing in are exactly the same object, the same object in memory, uh, the same thing. So not just look the same. And let's start with that. So if we do A and B, we get true. This makes sense, right? B is actually is containing, is bound to the same value as is bound to A. Um, what about C? If we compare A and C, we can see they are not equal under EQ. Um, that is very important. So these are two different strings in memory. And this is going to come up time and time again. Um, often like comparing two things by EQ is very fast, but when we're saying about them being the same thing in memory, it means that some things are not acceptable to be compared with EQ. For example, numbers. And this is a tricksy one. This catches a lot of people out because if you say EQ one on one, you might see it say true, and if you do EQ1 and 2, it says nil, and you think, well, that's perfect, that's working, right? Not necessarily. I mean, the reason is we have all these different numeric types in common list. Remember in one of the other videos, maybe, if you've seen it, um, we showed that we have things like fractions and big nums. So a big num is a special object that can hold a very large number, but it can also hold a very small number. So it's an object in memory that holds, say, three. And then we've got just a regular old primitive integer three. If you compare those two with EQ, they will say nil. This is really important because now if you've been using EQ as your equality for numerics, then it's breaking. Three is no longer equal to three and you know your program explodes. That's garbage. So you must always use um, EQ only for comparing actual identity, the same object in memory. But it's very useful for that and that comes up time and time again. If we want to compare two numbers for numeric equality, we can use equals. Here we go. So this, again, gives us the results we want, but this was made for doing numeric equality. If you're comparing characters, this is a little detail, but I will get, it will have a point. We have char equal. And so we can say, hey, the character C and the character C are equal, of course. Um, but the character little c and big C are not equal. And C and D and all the others, you know, like... This is for, for comparing characters. Now, having to use a separate um, equality function all the time would be rather tedious. There are common cases, right? So there's one called EQL. Uh, EQL is you're going to use all over the place. Very useful. And what it means is the same as either it's equal. equal it's, this is a very vi diff difficult video to do because we want to say equal so many times. And it's actually going to get worse before it gets better. So, so bear with me. Uh, EQL um, is equivalent of, it will return true if they're equal under EQ or numerically equal or are characters that are equal. Right? So this is the same as these three combined. 
So it's super useful. You're going to use it all over the place. Um, what it doesn't do is compare the contents of things. So we need to have a look at um, something for comparing contents. Let's start with that. So let's jump down. We'll just do that comparison to see that it does behave roughly how we want. I'm going to clear this now. Um, and I'm going to look at the next one, which is equal. Great naming, right? So equal returns uh, behaves exactly like uh, EQL, except it has some additional behaviors. Equal can handle lists. So if we do this, it recognizes that those are different and those are the same. It's comparing when it gets to a list, to uh, it compares the contents of the list to see if they're um, if they are equal according to its rules. Now it has a few more things it checks. So what we're going to do, rather than just remember them and try and spill them off, is uh, jump to the documentation. If I type that right, it would help a lot. Right, so here we go. Here's equal. It will compare things as if EQ or EQL. Um, it can compare uh, consoles. There's another video coming on consoles, um, but basically we can read this as it's going to be able to compare list and consoles correctly by looking at the elements that are inside them. Um, in arrays, it compares them by EQ except for strings and bit vectors, which we haven't got to either. Um, so we can see that if we use equal who and who, we get nil. But if we get the case right, it can tell us that they're the same. So equal is very useful there. There is a dedicated uh, string equality function called uh, string equal, but we're not going to get into that now. We'll, we'll actually talk about that in another video. Um, so yes, these are the most common ones. You're going to see EQ for comparing. Are these the same things in memory? We've got EQL, which is like, is this the same thing in memory? Or are they numbers and they are numerically equal? Or are they characters that are equal? Cool. Um, equal, which is like the combi combination of these, plus it can look inside uh, lists to compare for identity in there. One second. <coughs> oh. There's one last one, and I'm not a fan of it, but you need to know about it because you might see it in code. Um, it's one more in this family of uh, equality functions with this kind of naming, and it's equal p. Now, at first glance, it's really cool because what it can do is it can look inside structures, look inside objects, and compares the slots, compares the fields. So it's like uh, comparing two juggling balls. Then they're, they're not the same in really in any way. But if we compared them, like their properties about them, they're very similar. Um, so this can handle lists. It can handle strings. It can do all that. But um, in fact, let's, let's jump to the hyperspec just to see what it does. Oops, I will type that correctly one day. It can handle characters and numbers and conses like our lists. Um, it can, it can look inside arrays. Um, to check that the elements match. This is something that equal didn't do. Um, it can look inside structures and check that the values inside. It can look inside hash tables. Now, there's one thing that really sucks about this and is why I, I don't use it. Um, it doesn't care about case when it's comparing strings. And I don't, I, I think that's really crafty and weird. So I don't generally use equal P, but the other ones have I use every single day, and they're very useful. Equality is a weird subject. Even when you look at languages that have been around for a long time, and obviously like Lisp, even just something like C Sharp, um, you can overload equality on a single type, and which can actually mean if you do it weirdly, you can have um, A is equal to B, but B is not equal to A, depending on the rules you've dictated inside. So actually having different definitions of equality is very useful, and even in like um, C sharp, which is I'm only picking on it because it's a good language I use a lot. Um, it does have a, a comparison function for reference equality. It's either reference equality or identity. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head what it is. Um, yes, there we go. Lots of different kinds of equality. If that confused at all, yell comments below or just yell comments anyway. It's really nice to read what you guys think. Um, yeah, that should do for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.